Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be teaching y'all how to edit on Fonto. It's an editing app for your phone. I know it's on iPhone. I'm not sure if it's on Android. I'll have to check, but I use this to add all of my text to my thumbnails. It's a great app and has a lot of functions, so I thought I'd share with you guys the basics of how to use it today. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into the app Fonto, go to the bottom where there's a camera icon, and then scroll through your camera roll and find something you want. In the bottom left corner, there are a ton of different options for the different things you can do to edit. So for example, if you want to add an item, there's options to add like text bubbles, different shapes, if you want to add these pop-ups like little Instagram tags, and even some of these weird symbols. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate just adding a rectangle, but you guys can obviously add whatever shape you want. You'll just click on it and then you can just drag it around using your finger. When you click on it, you can change the size overall, you can change the width, and you can change the length. There's also an option for color where you can change the color of it to pretty much anything you want. There are options that are already pre-saved and then there are options that you can toggle with. And then on top of that, there's also an option to change the alpha or the opacity of the image that you add. When you click off of it, there's also an option to tilt it. So when you play around with this, you can either drag it to either side to change the tilt or what you can do is you can use the plus and the minus buttons to change the tilt. Another option is the move option. You can just drag the image around your uh, image that you're editing, but there's also that move option where you can either center it how you want or you can use little arrows and move it around. I think the arrows are especially useful if you're trying to get something very precise. If you go to the menu in the left bottom hand corner of the screen, you can also add an image. It's the same way that it works when you originally add an image. You just select something from your camera roll, click done, and then you can move it around and edit it the same way you can edit a shape such as the rectangle. There's also an option for themes. Basically, you can change like shapes and colors and stuff, but it, there's not many unless you go and have the pro plan for Fonto. And then you can also change the crop of it to a square if you wish. I'm just going to leave it how it is though because I prefer it as this rectangle. Next, we're going to talk about adding text. All you have to do is click on the image, click the text button that pops up, and then just start typing whatever you want. There's a menu that pops up that you can just go ahead and edit your text in. You have options to change the fonts. These are fonts that I downloaded, but this, these are all the fonts that come with it in the fonts tab. There's also an option to add a preset, so if you want to add like the specific date or something, you can do that. And there's also the symbol options, so you can add uh, like stars and arrows and stuff like right in the app, which is pretty useful. So I'm just showing you guys here like all the different ones you can add. Just going ahead and deleting that though. There's also an option to align it in the left, center, or right. And this is useful when you have like multiple lines of text. So like I have here, if you want something to line up a certain way, you just type all your text out and then play around with that until it's how you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it though. Then when you click on text, just in general, you'll have this menu that pops up and you can change a lot of different things. First, you can change the font by clicking on the font button and go through all the fonts you have. Then there's style, which gives you all these different effects. So the first one is color. There are preset options for the colors, but you can also play around with the different uh, bars that you see I'm dragging here and you can change and adjust the colors like that. So for instance, if you like this blue color, but you want it to be a little more muted, just play around with the different colors. You can drag it or you can use the plus and minus buttons. There's also an option to create your own color pattern and also to change the opacity of it like I'm doing right here. It's the alpha option. And then if you want to create like a color pattern, you go to the pattern option and then you'll see that there are these empty spaces that you can add colors to. So I'm just selecting different ones and you can edit these the same way you can edit text colors and change the opacity as well. What's cool though is if you go to the option that says horizontal in the top, you can change it so that you can make it a gradient and I think this looks really cool for certain effects. So there is also an option too to create your own patterns or to have patterns that are preloaded and use those. So you, you just go to that bottom section that says patterns and then click on it and then you guys can scroll through and see all the different patterns that there are. I don't really want any so I'm just going to go back to style. The next page in this uh, section of the menu is the stroke option and this is basically just an outline. So again you have all these different colors to choose from. There and then you can drag it and change the different colors as well. You can also change the opacity by dragging this alpha tool and then changing the width. By making it positive, you're going to make the outline go outside of the text and by making it negative, it's going to outline within the text, if that makes sense. And that's basically that. And then there's the background tool. You can add like a rectangular background to something. So the way I do this is I just click on whatever color I want. So for instance, I'm using the color black here. 
You can change the color too with the toggle buttons and then there's an alpha button to change the opacity. What's cool about the background too is you can change like the size of it so you guys can see I'm playing around with the width and the height and then you can also make the corners rounded if you wish. There's also some pre-built like styles that you can add. You can make it a cutout, you can add like different types of banners and stuff. I'm just demonstrating that here. There's a lot of different ones. I don't normally use them because it's more of an outdated graphic design style, but if you guys like any of these, obviously you can go ahead and use them. I'm gonna turn the option off though so that it's clear when you guys see the different effects I'm gonna talk about next. Okay, so the next menu at the top, you'll see it says style and color. You're gonna wanna go over to style and this is how you add like a, like basically like a shadow. Sorry, I forgot how to say that. And then like change the way the text looks. So if you want to shadow, the first thing you're going to want to do is change the alpha all the way up and then you can play around with the blur and see if you want it super blurry or if you want it to be just an opaque background. Then you can use the X and Y tools in order to move it back and forth. And there are options for the colors for the background, but you can't adjust them like the ones for the background or for the text in general. So you're a little bit limited there. And then on the bottom, there are just pre-saved options for you to add shadows to your text if you just want to use one of those. The next option here is spacing, and this is how far apart each of the individual letters are and how far apart each of the lines are. If you don't have a second line of text, they'll automatically put sample in so you guys can see that. So when you do this line spacing thing, you could see how far apart your lines are going to be. But that's one way you could play with that. There's also an underline option, and there are a ton of different underlines you can add. There's dashes and just straight lines. There's bold lines. All kinds of different stuff. I personally never use this because I don't ever underline my text, but if you guys have a need for it, it's there. There's also a blend option, which is new to the app. At least for me, I haven't noticed that this existed until I was making this tutorial, but there are different ways you can blend the text with your image. So if there's something specific you want to do with that, then you have that option there. So now I am done showing you guys this menu, so I'm going to click off of that. I'm also going to delete this text because it's messed up and I'm not exactly sure why and just retype it. So, yeah. <laughs> and then you guys see there's a garbage can, but I'll go into that later. So I'm just going to add my text again and we'll go into the next option. So the next way you can edit things is the size tool. It's the same idea with the toggle switch where you can just move it back and forth. And then you can also change the size using the plus and minus buttons. I keep accidentally clicking other parts of the menu, by the way, I'm sorry about that. There is also this tilt option where you can tilt it left and right, and then you can use plus and minus, or you can drag it to tilt it however you want. And then, like the uh, rectangle I was showing you guys earlier, there's also a move tool, and then there's also different layouts, like if you want it to be in a certain part of the screen, you can just go to that layout option and it'll do that. You can also curve the text, so if you want it to basically like curve around someone's head like I'm demonstrating here. You can do that and I'm just messing around with it. I usually change the tilt too when I do curves so that things line up better but this is just an example of what that looks like. I'm just gonna go back and change it back to normal though. There's also a 3D option which is pretty cool and you can drag it and make it look like the text is coming at you. So for instance if I wanted the text to appear like it was coming towards me along these or along the shoreline I'm just dragging it and resizing it. It's a pretty cool option, and it's something that I don't know how to do on any other site, so pretty cool that it exists, and I like it. And then there is also this eraser tool, so I'm going to demonstrate it here. Basically, you can just erase the text however you want, but the one use I use this for the most is if the text is like overlapping something in the foreground. So, for instance, this girl's head is here. I just use the erase tool, and I'll erase any text that overlaps, and it looks like it's almost like attached or behind her head which is pretty cool, so I think you have to pay for it, but I think it's like 99 cents, so it's worth it. And yeah, so the other options here are the duplicate tool, which are just these like two pieces of paper looking things. And then there's also the delete tool. You just click on the garbage can and you can delete the image. So some other options are to add basically anything from a camera roll. And there's also this project option, which I'll show you how to use. When you go to save the image, you can save it as a PNG, which will save it to your camera roll, or you can actually save the project. And so when you do that, when you go to add projects, what you can do is actually go back to whatever you were editing and be able to move everything again. So as you guys can see, those are all my different projects. And so I clicked off of it and then I loaded the project again and I was actually able to completely edit it based on what I had already done.